strong, empowered, authentic. What's up, Ginger Nation? This is Tosh. This is Darren, and you are listening to the Authentic Ginger Podcast. Welcome, Ginger Nation, to the Authentic Ginger Podcast. I'm Tosh Taylor. And I'm Darren Roach, and on today's episode, we have one of the most creative people we have ever had on the show, Tosh, a comic artist, a character of cosplay, and author of the very popular book, Being Ginger. Welcome to the show, Catherine Hemmings. Hi, thank you so much. That's really sweet of you to say all those things. And uh, yeah, I'm doing good. How is everyone? How are you? Awesome. Yep. Doing really well. It's, it's <laughs> the dead of winter here. Snow has been on the ground for weeks. We haven't had any snow yet. We had some oh. snow just before Christmas, but no snow here. It's just oh. cold and just dark and that's it. And dreary. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's worse. I don't know what's worse. <laughs> Welcome to England. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell us about yourself and and, uh, and what you're up to. So, yeah. So I've been doing comics for a while now, about three years, four years. Really accidentally, when my partner kind of went you should draw comics because they're fun. And I didn't really read them. So I ended up on the comic course by accident. And <sighs> three years later, I have three comic books. Obviously my most popular what? one being um, being Ginger. And it's just so fun to tell all of these stories I have from the experience of being Ginger in this little book. <laughs> and now I'm just kind of, I'm a full-time artist from this whole accidental thing that happened. And yeah, I'm just absolutely loving being at home and not having a boss that shouts at me. <laughs> Even though now I am my own boss. So when I'm just like lying in my bed at 10 a.m., I'm thinking, get up, get to work, Catherine. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my boss is so mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> Crazy. Your artwork is incredible. So obviously you grew up knowing you could draw, right? Yeah, so I, I drew a lot as a kid, but then I stopped drawing just after art GCSE because it just sort of ruined the love and passion for art I had. But my my older sister is really into art. She's a stained glass artist. And so I watched her do all that artsy stuff as well. So I have grown up in the world of art, but I just never, I never picked up a comic book as a kid, which I think is really strange. But I was always reading like Japanese manga and things like that. But yeah, it never occurred to me that, that's something you could do if you wanted. Yeah. And make a living out of it at the same time. Yeah. Like, look out. You, you wow. mean I can stay at home in pajamas and just color things for a living? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> exactly. So so when you were like, at what point did you realize that you could do this? I mean, other than the fact, you know, when, when you said, you know what, I guess I could do this and go to school for it. Um, as Tosh mentioned, you, you, uh, you must have known. But, you know, at what point did you kind of really like go, I do have a talent for this. Like, where, where, where does that start? I think it was when I put out the first comic of Being Ginger, oh, and really? it was one. It was one where um, it was the one where I'm like I'm on the beach and I'm just squirting all the sun cream on me, and it's just like an entire bottle to slather because that's how much like ginger people need. Right. <laughs> and everyone was sharing it like crazy, and I was thinking, I'm just telling funny little stories here, but everyone seems to really like this. Wow. <laughs> and I think it was at that moment that I thought okay this is something that people like and it's not just me having a bit of a laugh at my own expense <laughs> so what i want to know like what kind of uh what kind of things did you take from growing up being a ginger and put in the book so obviously the fact that we need a ton of sunscreen what other things have you wrote thrown in there just being able to like have a laugh at things like you always get the whole thing like gingers don't have souls yeah and as a kid that always aggravated me but now it's just something like you laugh off and things like our oh, gingers are vampires or gingers can't do this so it's just like or when like everyone at school would bully you and then they'd dye their hair a year later ginger and you're just looking at them like <laughs> yeah right <laughs> It's all those like yeah. traumatic things that happen when you're a kid. And then you go, actually, that was all really funny now to look back at it. Right. Yeah. Did, and none of it, it made you, sense. It, none, none of it makes sense. That's right. But <laughs> did, did you um did you take it in mentally? Like did you did you uh, was it hard for you? Like did you pass it off at that point in your life or did you go like, yeah, that kind of hurts me. Like, you know, you're you're making fun of me in a way. Um what were those experiences like? 
it did hurt me I'm not gonna lie like it, I I spent a lot of my childhood really hating the fact that I was ginger and begging my parents to let me dye my hair for some reason I wanted it to be like really black like goth black um of all right. the drastic things to change to um sort of but tough. then I think when I got to like the end of high school I just had so much of it constantly that I was just a bit numb to it now and I was just like what's wrong with being ginger I like my hair color you're all dyeing your hair this color you're paying a lot of money to get this hair color so <laughs> and, they, and they never will ever be able to recreate it so. no <laughs> That I think is my favorite part is you can try all you like and spend so much money, but you're never going to be able to pinpoint this, this color. Yeah. <laughs> what I always found weird as well when this, the comic started to come out and the book came out is that some people, I think it was Australia. I can't remember if it was Australia. were saying that like redheads don't get bullied over there. <laughs> so they didn't quite understand the comics. I was like, what do you mean? You don't get bullied over there? Can I come live with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. We need to find somebody from Australia and interview them because I would like yeah. to know. <laughs> they were like, why is everyone so mean? That doesn't make sense. I was like, what do you mean, people? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. Yeah. Totally like maybe, true. maybe we're like a, this mystical kind of persona over there where people just idolize gingers instead. How do we not yeah. know this information? We're going to have to look into <laughs> <I know>. it. <laughs> so the so the book then takes us through the the, the these um, events that has ha have happened in your life. Uh, the comic the comic book takes takes us through that that sort of uh, trajectory of all these little things that happen. Um, is that is the book something that's that's uh, a continuation? Can you continue to write on that, or do you did you stop at being ginger and then? write another one and have another one in mind now or are you writing for one right now as well like, what where is it where is it now for that so like after being ginger um i kind of felt like i can't write any more soul jokes <laughs> without yeah. hurting my soul um but i wanted to continue that sort of the four panel comic story thing so i moved it on to my other passion which is like cosplaying so then my next book after that was being a cosplayer, which is the exact same format as being Ginger. Again, taking the funny stories cosplayers experience and turning them into four panel funny little things that everyone will, if they read the book, if you're a cosplayer, you will relate to instantly. Right. And is that a world that you've always been interested in, cosplay? Yeah. So I've been cosplaying for about eight years now. I went to my first comic convention and I saw some people dressed up as a Disney princess. And I was just like, you mean you, you, I can do this? <laughs> yeah. I can just buy a princess dress and just be a princess for a weekend? Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. let me join. <laughs> Tosh, uh, I have a question for you, Tosh. Who hmm. would you cosplay? I, I don't know because I have never got into the, the cosplay world. So I am like, I'm right now I have my phone up and I'm looking up your cosplay account because <laughs> I, that's my first thought was, do you play Ariel or do sure you do you Merida or who, who are you cosplaying all the time? So out of the iconic redheads, I, I have done Ariel, but a really long time ago and I need to redo her. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done Merida and Anna. Anna is like one of my favorite ones to do. Yeah. Um, but my most common and most popular ones that I do is Squirrel Girl and Morty from Rick and Morty and Gwenpool. Surprisingly, I make a very convincing 14 year old boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's crazy <laughs> it really is and and so i have to uh, i have to say i have been i have been to a, a comic-con uh not comic-con but uh, a comic is it comic festival or, or cosplay festival or or they're called lots of different things like comic-con or comic festival so yeah so i've been to our local one here in halifax uh several times in fact i was i was working for uh, for the organization at one point and i was just amazed at how much time people put into costumes it's unbelievable. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's truly, if you've never been, it's truly uh, an, an eye opening experience. And I can see how quickly you could get really hooked into the world of cosplay, uh, especially if you've grown up, you know, with your favorite, you know, characters of comic and, and, and all of these, you know, um, you know, I, I guess, uh, Groot, uh, you know, that series, 
Marvel series. Yeah, I always get stumped when it comes to movies because I don't know <laughs> shit about movies. But <laughs> Tosh is usually our movie person. But but I can see how you how quickly you can get really attached to uh, to this uh, cosplay stuff, and I think it's fantastic. The the work that gets put in is just unreal. Yeah, it is insane. Where some yeah. of the ones that I see and they're just full on mecha suits. I don't know how they breathe or see or do anything in it, but it's yeah. absolutely incredible to look at. But that's not to take away from the people that just buy their cosplay online and just turn up. It's still you're just showing your passion for that fandom, and it's like it doesn't matter if you spent hours and hours on a cosplay or you've just spent like ten pound on one down the street. When you come into Comic Con, the passion for it and the level of like friendship and loveliness of everyone, it's just such a welcoming experience. And I think that's what sometimes gets lost when people see these massive cosplays that they're so good, they're so excellent, but never ever let it stop you thinking, oh, I can never do that, so I'm never gonna cosplay. Like just come in like you know get get a dress from primark and say it's this or yeah. whatever <laughs> and just have fun yeah um a lot of my cosplays are bought or i've got them from like charity shops and me and my mom have like modded them um yeah. and it's just i just love going to them and showing my absolute love for that fandom and it's like a work of escapism in a way like for that one weekend i'm not catherine i'm i am the amazing squirrel girl or i'm morty and i get to have fun Right. And I highly recommend you both coming to any any of the big ones. It's awesome. New York Comic Con yes. is like, I've never been, but it looks incredible. It, I <laughs> imagine it would be absolutely bonkers, bonkers. And can I side note, because I don't know much about Rick and Morty, but is it not true that Rick and Morty is based off of Back to the Future? Am yes, I right about has, that? Okay. <laughs> it has some links. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I'm like, I, give me all the Michael J. Fox you can do you make your own costumes are you going out but you said you and your mom you modify the costumes and then do you keep them or do you sell them after what do you what do you do with them yeah so I, I keep all of them so in this room that I'm in right now half of it is my art study room so all this is all my artwork I can do but in the next part part this room which is just off camera is my cosplay room so it's just got all of my costumes in wig stands for days all of my props my massive squirrel tail because it's like five foot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's my mom hates me a little bit because I'm just slowly taking over the house <laughs> right <laughs> so, I can't imagine walking through through uh comic-con with uh a five foot squirrel tail you must piss a lot of people off at the f- yeah you know it's going back and forth as you're weaving through like it, it's really hard to find open open space to walk in these events tosh it's unreal they're just jam-packed like, just, they? it's hard yeah it's hard to find a space to walk so you can just imagine you know Catherine in there with a five foot tail uh, from a squirrel <laughs> just walking through it'd be really funny that's awesome I have knocked over a small child before no <laughs> <laughs> I just someone called my name and I just quickly turned not thinking and then this small child fell over and I was like no oh, I'm so sorry that's <laughs> it. Well, so like, I, how much does it weigh like it doesn't weigh anything oh okay um because it's just filled with like empty bottles and like padding so it's really light but if you ever got whacked with it it is quite a big bracing thing so (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's soft but it's a bit like whoa okay yeah Yeah. what's up ginger nation if you're looking for authentic ginger swag go to www.authenticginger.com use code ag podcast for 20 percent off your next purchase now you've got me curious, Tosh, because now you're asking these questions. Now I'm thinking to myself, how does it get attached? Obviously, it has to be attached to to the mid midsection of your of your body. Like it has to be wrapped around you. I'm assuming to to stay attached, not just right. Like it's just a backpack. Oh yeah! Wow, look at that. See? Yeah, because we started doing all that, like attaching it around my waist and everything, but it pulled on the costume too much. So uh, we literally just stole the straps off a backpack, and I wear it like a backpack. That's that makes this life a lot easier. <laughs> But yeah. also, I can see why it takes up so much room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting it on the train to London is the funniest thing. <laughs> I have to, I'm just there, like, should I buy it an extra ticket for a, a seat? Because yeah. it's going to take yeah. a seat. <laughs> yeah. It's basically the size of a human. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Do you find that because you're a ginger, your cosplay means that you feel like you have to be ginger characters? Because pretty much everybody you've mentioned is a ginger character. Do you ever go as someone else who's who's not ginger for a day? There are a lot of cosplayers that I do that are ginger, but a lot of them are 
like blonde as well and okay. got brown hair black hair I tend to actually try and not do as many ginger characters just because I feel like it looks a bit too much like me <laughs> and then when yeah. I want to do like when I get into cosplay I want to look like someone else and I think it's because it's expected of me that I do ginger cosplays like I don't mind but when people say oh like oh you should do Ariel I'm like are you saying that just because I'm ginger yes <laughs> because of course I'd have to wear a wig either way yeah <laughs> Yeah. My hair's not that red. It's yeah. <laughs> nobody's is. Nobody's is the the fire engine crazy red. You know that's what I wondered because I was like looking up Squirrel Girl and she's a ginger. Um, so yeah. I uh, yeah I was just I was just curious about that. That's all. It's just nice to meet other gingers. <laughs> I don't know. Like I feel like here in the UK, there's like a ginger for every like fifty people. So I'm just like, oh, yes, more ginger people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak, speaking of that, my first experience uh, with uh, with Ginger Parrot was was researching festivals. And so, um, you know, of course, you know, when you type in Redhead Festival, it's one of the first things that pops up is is, is that website. Um, question for you. Do, have you attended any Redhead Festivals in your life? No, I was meant to go to their last one in London just mm -hmm. before the pandemic, or I think the pandemic was about to happen. And I was designing some merchandise and everything for it. And I was so excited. And then obviously it got cancelled. And so that's that was going to be my first one. And I know there's one in, is it the Netherlands? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I really yeah, I want to go to that it, one. Yeah, hmm. I think they're going to have it this year. Uh, I was yeah. talking to Bart and uh, Bart's the uh, the the creative director there or, or whoever he is. Um, he, uh, he, he runs that and he, I think the, it's going to go off this year. So it's, it's, it's exciting times for the redhead festivals. Yeah. Have you been to a ginger festival? No. Oh. And I don't even know here in North America, like I have never heard of one, at least on the East coast of Canada, where we are, I haven't heard of one. Um, but I sure would like to get one going. <laughs> That's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. We might be, you we so might be the first should. one. <laughs> yeah, we might be. We'll have to we'll have to see because uh, we want to see more like minded people. and We want to see some more gingers that are doing really cool things like you are, uh, which makes me think we should probably talk to you about maybe giving our listeners a book. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That would be awesome. If you if you have your festival around New York Comic Con time, I would absolutely love to come and be there for it. Be amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find out. It's a lot of money, so I'm gonna get two months. One trip. Yeah, one trip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I have a question just about the comics as well. Your comics that you're doing, like your your Instagram account is mm. just it's insane. Um, how long did you start that? How 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 far along the years uh, did you start uh, putting your stuff there? Um, it was probably 2018. Cause that's when Bean Ginger yeah. came out. That was when I first started like starting to do art on there and launched yeah. that account. And again, uh, 90 percent of those followers are just from yeah. that book just because those comics went so i hate using the word viral but they sure. went everywhere Why not? Yeah. and all over different random accounts where they got translated into different languages which was really cool to see but kind of weird wow. <laughs> yeah no it definitely would and, be. and and then so what does small press comic what is a small press comic is it, you talked about something to do with four panels or something like that earlier in the show is that what that means so you're doing comics in a small now, small press is just like when you aren't with a big label or anything. So I'm a small press creator because I'm not with like Marvel, Titan, Icon Books, Image or anything. I just do it for myself. Like I self-publish yep. everything. Um, so that's what kind of like Got small it. press is. So in the UK, we have like a small press day where just us local creators, small creators get together and just share as much of our work as we can. Because obviously the big guys, Marvel, DC, they do all their own marketing and they, they're they never going to have trouble selling yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. But for <laughs> small people like us, it's a bit harder. So it's nice that we have a day dedicated in the UK to promoting people like myself. Fantastic. So yeah. I usually have a segment on the show where I launch, you know, certain facts about the redhead culture. Today, I thought I would switch it around and put you in the spot in a hot chair and ask you, Catherine, what your top two redhead facts would be. Hmm. See, like in my book, I have three pages of facts and I'm like, can I remember any of them? <laughs> number, one, number one, my favorite, because it makes me, you know, a bit excited for the afterlife, is that it was, <laughs> it was rumored that when we die, we turn into vampires. Well, there you go. Which I kind of get because we're so pale. So I guess that's where that's come from. <laughs> <laughs> I love but I'm kind of yeah. excited for that. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that too. I don't mind. <laughs> 
And the other one is that um, ginger people have less hair on their head, but it's just thicker. So you never notice that difference, but it is there is less of it. So whenever my mom's like, oh, you have such thin hair. I'm like, actually, mom, it's because I'm ginger and it's this yeah. and this and this. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's one of my favorite facts, too. Actually, nobody ever believes me. Well, you got so much hair. No, I really don't, actually. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I can technically. It. Yeah. Yeah, I there's a lot there, but it's just horse hair yeah. is what it feels like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Every time I like wash my hair, so much of it comes out and I'm like, I don't oh, have that much God, hair to begin I can't with. Even... If this keeps happening. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's ridiculous. It I, you're sharing a shower with three girls. I can't even imagine <laughs> yeah, how it is. <laughs> Listen, I gotta tell you, it's it really sucks. There is so much <laughs> carnage in that bathroom after all the girls in my household have <laughs> had their showers. It's just absolutely disgusting to me. <laughs> <laughs> you're just making another human yeah i can't even hair. touch it i Seriously. can't touch it i I, yeah. I try to wash it off like i do not touch it i will not touch it it grosses me out <laughs> <laughs> so yes we're all the same then we're all losing a lot of hair in the shower yeah. that's <laughs> and that is not just me <laughs> no no definitely not it's me too i think my husband's just gotten used yeah. to it now but uh and my kids aren't ginger so they're not too too bad but Anyway, um, before we go, I am going to do a couple of I usually just do like the celebrity news and um, the cosplay kind of made me think of Outlander because I am sure that there are a ton of people that are cosplaying that. I know. I know. But it comes out soon. Darren, I know. don't roll your eyes at me. I <laughs> It is coming out. So now everybody's talking about it right now. Right. It's coming out March the 6th. So that is when we can expect to see it on our TV screens on stars again with, I don't know what it is. I haven't, I'm, I'm behind a season. So I think it's season five, maybe it's season six, but anyway, sure. yeah, that's coming out. Also fun fact about that show, uh, out of all of the people that are gingers on that show, I have only found one actual ginger oh, God. <laughs> and that's Galus. It's like a really, she had a, half decent sized part in the show but like the two main characters are gingers and they're not in real life so i know i bring that up on every episode that i talk about but damn it hire some gingers would you that would be lovely yeah. does that drive you nuts <laughs> Catherine? like you know yeah yes it what drives me more nuts is like really famous ginger characters um slowly being replaced over the years and we're losing that gingerness in all of like comics and cartoons from when i was a kid i'm like it the day they replace kim possible and she isn't ginger i will i will i will be very mad <laughs> there's your next comic replacing kim impossible <laughs> yeah it's true like, though it. yeah yeah it is let us have what we have we yes. <laughs> we need these little things we need i i'm totally with you on that and i have actually heard a friend of mine she grew up with Kim Possible as like her absolute fave. And that's who her daughter wanted to be for Halloween this year. And her daughter's a blonde. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you're not doing it unless you wear a wig. This is this is the only way this is going to go down. <laughs> yeah. Kim Possible is a redhead. <laughs> so she wore a I've wig. just thought, I've just thought my fact, I'm going to give you one more fact because yeah. it should have been this one. Is that in like original comics and stuff, there were so many redheads and so many fem female redheads. It's because the redhead colour was much easier to print and much nicer to print than any other hair colour. That's why in original comics, there are so many redheads. There oh, you go. Now that I didn't I like know. That. I love that fact. Yeah. For the win. Yeah. Absolutely for the win. For the win. Yeah. <laughs> Replace me on this seat here in the show pretty soon. That was great. Yeah. Yes, yes. Get out of here, you non-ging. <laughs> yeah, <that's okay. laughs> to be fair, how many gingers do I have in my household, Tosh? Four. Per, per four. Well, when your son's <laughs> around. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Is your grandbaby yeah, you a go. ging too? No, he's not. <sighs> he's not. He's not. No, he's uh he's very much a blonde. He's very today. Now that could change. That could change. Yep. He could, could change, but but he wasn't born a ginger, no. No shirts for him. He might get the ginger. He might. <laughs> he might get it. Yeah, that's right. That's what I have when it, well, when it's not gray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those days. Oh my God. Yeah. That's well, you know what, Catherine, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. And I think that we should give everybody a chance to follow you as well. And tell us where we can find your book. I have it in my basket right now. I'm going to buy it before we are done here today. So, because I want to, to own this book as well. So tell everybody how they can get being ginger and more. 
cool. So you can follow me on social media. Um, my handle on every everything is khemmings94. And you can get my book through Ginger Parrot, which would be really cool because you can support them as well. And or you can get it on my website, which is katherinehemmings.co.uk or on Etsy as well. Just type in being ginger into Google and it will appear somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to like give you some books to maybe do a competition as well. Give some of your followers some ginger goodies. Yeah, as well. we'd love that. Yes. We'd love that. We'll, we'll take that offline and uh, we'll put a contest together with you. And uh, we'll definitely, most definitely uh, do a contest here. It'd be awesome. Yes. Very much so. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you for joining us today. No, thank you for inviting me. It's been so much fun. Awesome. <laughs> You've been listening to the Authentic Ginger Podcast. On today's show, we had Catherine Hemmings. It was a blast. It was a treat. I can't wait to do it again, Catherine. Thank you very much and have a great day. And you can uh, go, go check out our show notes too to find out how you can win a book. Bye. You've been listening to the Authentic Ginger Podcast. Become a part of the Ginger Nation by liking, subscribing, following, and leaving a review wherever you listen to podcasts. This podcast was produced by Tosh Taylor of the Podcast Hub Productions. Find her online at podcasthub.ca.